Bunda. I'm taking you through the course Electrical Engineering Circuit Analysis, TEE 1103, as it is called at NAST. This is an introduction course for all students doing engineering at NAST. Thank you. TEE 1103 is a course in Electrical and Electronic Engineering in which we introduce the basics of electrical engineering. When we talk about electrical engineering, we are talking about the issue of components, circuits, and power transfer. That's the same thing we talk about in electronic engineering. But in this case, I'm presenting a series of videos on electrical engineering is taken at the National University of Science and Technology. Uh, the course uh, is regularly known as TEE 1103 for the first year course. TEE 1103 is electrical engineering circuit analysis and uh, in this year, the first semester, the course is taught by Mr. Lakhmukunda for the Faculty of Industrial Technology. And uh, I'm presenting a lecture series, and uh, it will be quite uh, good for you to understand this introduction because it forms the basis for all your studies that you carry out later. Right, the subject uh, is well known because it forms the basis for the studies in electrical and electronic engineering. If you look at it closely, you realize that people talk about electrical circuit theory. They give different names, different course codes, because the codes uh, depend on the institution and how they form those codes. But basically, they form the basis. And also, uh, equally important is the electromagnetic theory. But in this case, we are not looking at that. Main thing is the transfer of energy between components which are interconnected to form uh, what we call an electric circuit. So you can say that an electric circuit will be an interconnection of uh, different components. And uh, in the can be shown in a simple circuit whereby you have a battery and uh, a lamp or an, and a load that you can use. Then currents will move from the positive through the load back uh, to the negative, and then uh, the circuit is complete in that way. Right. Uh, and then you can also have some complex uh, electric circuits which have uh, resistors uh, and also capacitors and uh, transistors. But these are not the, all the components that you can have in the electric circuit. There can be more components, some of them formed into ICs, and so on, and so on. But in this course, we deal with capacitors, resistors, and uh, inductors. So the basic thing is the battery, which acts as the source. Then also look at the capacitor, which is an energy storing band. Then also look at resistors, which basically just offer uh, some resistance or opposition to the flow of current in the circuit. You can also talk about inductors, which are it also uh, at first is uh, resisting the change in current, and uh, in a DC circuit, they end up uh, acting just like those uh, connecting wires, uh, which we show. All right. Uh, these uh, components again, they can be grouped into passive and active components. In which when you talk about passive components, we are talking about the capacitors. And uh, if you look at a capacitor, it's just something that uh, stores charge uh, to the maximum uh, with respect to the uh, power being supplied. Then also look at uh, an inductor, which uh, slowly uh, reduces uh, its opposition to the uh, flow of current in DC circuits until it also acts as a short circuit. Then also have a resistor, which will always allow uh, the passage of current, but always with some opposition uh, being offered by the uh, resistor. The building blocks also include active components, which uh, include the batteries, uh, the generators, and also some ICs. And the ICs are components uh, which 
act uh, depending on the amount of energy supplied to them or the power that is supplied to them. Right, so in a passive element, the current moves downhill. So you can look at it that uh, it looks like someone is going downhill, that means they have uh, to lose uh, energy. That's why we say there is a potential drop or a potential drop across a passive uh, component because of that downhill motion. Then we look at the sources, uh, the active components, whereby we are seeing current moving uphill. That's why uh, we say there is a potential rise uh, across a, a source because it gives energy to the circuit and the uh, current moves like that and it gains in energy. Right. Then the basic passive component that we have with the resistance, which is our opposition to the flow of current, uh, the inductance, which is the opposition uh, to the flow of current, uh, but in this case it opposes a change in the uh, direction of the magnitude. Then also you have the capacitor, which also opposes a change in voltage, but also it also stores uh, uh, charge in it. But you will note that resistors and inductors, they have basically the same uh, properties. That means a resistor can have inductance and capacitance, as well as an inductor is a uh, resistance and it has uh, capacitance. As, and the capacitor can also have some uh, resistance. Now the question that comes into mind will be, what is the difference or what differentiates these uh, elements then? Right. The answer is, the elements are differentiated by looking at the dominant property. And so we use the dominant property uh, to name uh, the component. That means when you're talking about a resistor, the dominant property of the resistor is its resistance. That means all the other uh, the other two components uh, can be uh, neglected, right? Then we look at uh, resistance like uh, someone, this voltage, we call them someone. The voltage is trying to push current through uh, a circuit and then the resistor, which uh, is measured in ohms, will try to oppose that movement so that if current moves from point A to B, then it will meet that resistance which is offered uh, by that resistor. So the resistor will be trying to stop the flow of, of current. So when you talk about the flow of current now, you can say that the resistor, as it becomes bigger, it gives uh, more uh, opposition or resistance. Then the inductor, the dominant property of the inductor is the inductance. So we call it an inductor because of that. But you realize that inductors are also made up of of wires, but we cannot talk about the resistance of the inductor. Why? Because the dominant uh, property is the, the inductance, right? Then, how do we visualize inductance? When we take our current to be uh, that guy who is trying to move in one direction and then suddenly decides to turn, then we can take the inductance to be like a traffic cop who stops uh, that guy and say, no, you can't make a, a U10. Then if we take the same uh, analysis uh, when looking at uh, capacitance, we can take that guy now to become the, uh, the, the voltage, right? It tries to change uh, the direction or the magnitude, and then the traffic uh, cop, which is the capacitance, will say, no, you can't change that direction. So the active components, again, they are a bit different now because the active components, like we noted before, the current flows uphill. So the current is flowing, Apple, it's going up the hill. So what do we need? We need a source to give energy uh, to the uh, charges. So we talk about current sources and, and voltage sources, right? Then there are also some components which do not really uh, donate power, but they can electrically control the flow of, of electrons. That means those components like the transistors, the diodes and so on, they are also tend to be active components. Why? Because they act according to the direction uh, and the magnitude of the voltage that is supplied to them or the current that is passing uh, through them. So they actually need a source so that they can, they can operate. So in conclusion, what we can we say in this introduction? We know that the circuit theory is the best for our studies in, electro in electronic engineering, right? Then what are we looking at? In this course, we are looking at the transfer of energy. That is the most important thing 
We cannot talk about resistance, then we leave it there. We need to see how energy is transferred from one component to another, and then we form an electric circuit. We are talking about these elements, you find out that sometimes they will also be called components, which means if someone says an electric component, he's saying, I'm talking about a, an electric element, resistance, capacitance, and so on, as we saw before. Right. Then the elements can be passive or active. We saw that the passive uh, components, the resistance, uh, the capacitors, and the inductors. The inductance doesn't change because you have put a voltage. The resistance doesn't change because you have uh, passed the current through it. The capacitance doesn't change because you have induced a voltage there. No, those values don't change. Then they are called passive components. The active ones, those are the ones which you say they can change depending on the source that is applies to them. So passive elements don't need sources to operate. That means their um, values or properties do not change. Capacitance it remains the same. Resistance and inductance. An active component, they can either donate energy to the circuit or they can electrically control the flow of electrons. So, if you find this interesting, you can also go to a blog which uh, I wrote, which I'm still updating every day, depending on my whatever I come across, which I would want to share with you. That's triple inch tech forum dot blogspot dot com, or on Facebook you can go also on the triple inch tech forum. Uh, that's a uh, Facebook group page. You can also discuss uh, those things. So I hope you enjoy everything and it works well for you. Bye for now. See you in the next uh, uh, lectures. By the way, I'll be also presenting lectures and tutorials. So it's up to you and your interest and your best interest, especially if you're a first year student in the electrical and electronic engineering and also in any courses that deal with this. This will be very helpful. And uh, I encourage you to go on through that. Bye for now.